Hello, today we're going to be going over to 2024 Salem Hemisphere uh, 36 FL. We're going to be starting right up front here. Basically, you're going to have your little light here. So if you had to kind of do some things up front at night, you kind of got a light to see. Inside our front storage compartment, you're going to have your spare tire. And you got two batteries, one on each located on each side. Watch your head camera, lady. As note to you as well, always watch your head. These guys here on each side are pretty much the vents for the uh, batteries. We do have aftermarket cameras that were installed per customer request. These are the side cameras. There's one on each side, and then it's got the backup camera as well. Next in here, as you see, it is labeled Pro Paint. So inside here, you're going to have two 30 pound tanks. These guys have both been filled, minus what we use to test the propane system with. Next, you're going to basically have your regulator here. This guy here, one, will tell you what tank you're using, just with that notch piece there. But as you see right now, it's reading red, showing us that we it isn't sensing any propane. That's because I do have these tanks turned off. I'm going to turn this on. Usually, it takes just a second. And then that guy flips the green, telling us that we have propane flow. So basically, this guy is designed to where you can have both tanks on if you wanted to. Once the one tank is emptied, it will start pulling from the other tank. The only problem is you don't know that this tank is empty unless you come out here and look at this regulator. Because it would be reading red because it's trying to read this tank. And then all you would do is just swap it to the other side. And then go get the other side fill, refill. When you go to take these guys off, you're just going to take this piece off here. This piece kind of comes off and lays out. This will come off and then you're able to pull your tanks out. They do have to go in and out at a kind of an angle. Next inside here is going to be basically you got your manual crank, but you're also going to have your ground control, pretty much your leveling system located right in here. So when we first go to turn this guy on, you got your power button right here. It'll tell you ready. And we're just gonna kind of comb through some of the options that it's got. As you see that light's flashing because it's trying to say that the left side is low or high. But when you push down, you got auto hitch. So what this is basically designed to do is uh, when you guys are all done camping, you hit auto hitch and it'll set the camper to its last unknown hitch position that you unhooked from. It's kind of a nice little feature. But that was the down one. We're going to go back the other way. I'm going to go upward. It's got a manual level. You hit enter to begin uh, or hit enter to go into that. But generally, manually leveling is um, if you're trying to fine tune it. So you want to elevate one side or the other a little bit on your own. Generally, you're just going to always hit the auto level when you go to level your camper. You got auto retract rear. So it would automatically bring up the rear jacks. Auto retract all. The only time you should hit this button is when you are once you have been hooked to your trailer or to your tow vehicle and you know you're hooked up, okay? Because when you hit this, it's going to bring up those front jacks for you and if the back jacks were not all the way up for some reason. Then the auto hitch. And then you'll bring back to the ready. So when you go, basically, you go turn this on, you've done unhooked from your tow vehicle, uh, the tow vehicle is not underneath the coach, then you'll hit your auto level. You do want to try to make sure that it is fairly level. Uh, too much of an angle to the left or to the right can cause this guy to throw an air code on you if you are not careful. Uh, and it will also let you know that, you know, hey, something's happened. You know, you need to hit enter to acknowledge. Another thing to also note with that is that if for some accident reason, you go to hit the auto retract rear but you were accidentally in the all and you hit enter, you can push any button on this monitor panel and it's going to abort that mission and then you'll have to hit enter to acknowledge that, hey, you're trying to stop what you were wanting me to do. And you do also have some instructions right here just to kind of basics about how to fire it up and operate it and things along that nature as well. These stickers right here, you'll see these guys on the doors. Uh, you know, stickers last forever, so it ain't ever gonna come off, but you don't wanna try to remove these stickers. If for some reason something got ha happened where the damage to the compartment door or the frame or anything along those lines, 
This sticker is the information needed so we can order the right size. And door. These guys here are gonna be controlled or operated with this purple key that I marked for you with a C for compartment to lock that. They give you a whole bunch of keys. We'll talk about those as we go along the way. Uh, basically the ones, if you'll look on your key locks, you'll see some that will say M. That pretty much means a master key. So that's gonna be bas basically that purple compartment, that purple key for the compartments. This side here is just your middle pass-through storage compartment as well. I already got the other side open, as you can see. Next inside here, this guy would open up, but you're also got another storage here where you can pull, pull this guy out, be able to store your items in here, and then slide her back in. Don't store them, obviously, on the back side. It only stays on the tray. This handles here is how you release to pull it out. Next, we got our pretty much our sewer caps here. I missed one, didn't I? I did, underneath that slide. <laughs> My apologies for that. So, down here, you're going to have a gray tank, which is, I believe, was just your kitchen sink. And then the black tank, which is going to be for that secondary bathroom. And that is for both the sink and the toilet. And then back here, you would have your other sewer hookup. You would hook up to these guys. And then you got your basically your main black and then your rear gray tank. And inside, I did write down uh, which ones, uh, what tank, what everything goes to which tank. <clears throat> this guy here is going to be your filter water canister. There is a filter inside uh, that you would put in this guy. Uh, does have to be removed whenever you go to winterize you would just take that filter out uh this will fill up with antifreeze when you go to winterize the coach so when you go to winterize it doesn't hurt to go ahead and just fill this guy partially with the antifreeze and then put this guy back on uh because then it will pull not uh less amount of antifreeze out of that jug where you ain't got to try to swap them around as quickly got a light here so you can see at night when you also go to winterize, this is going to be your valve to stop water going to the water heater. Just basically turn it upward to winterize your system. You got your city water hookup. This is where you're going to basically have your water spigot. You're always going to have a pressure regulator on the spigot. From there, your options of another inline water filter, but you got this one right here. And then you're going to have your blue or white water drinking hose. And then from there, you'll be ready to use the coach. The other side is where you would fill your fresh water tank. It is uh, pressure fed. But you do want to read the monitor panel inside when you're filling this tank so that you shut the water off when it does read full. And then you got your black tank flush, black one and black two. Uh, pretty much with these guys, I always do like to recommend that you're going to have a pressure regulator on a spigot as well. Uh, the reason for that is because on the back side here are plastic check valves. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve, okay? But then go out and get yourself a black hose. Black tank, black hose, it keeps it simple. Blue and white is for our drinking, black is for the waste. You don't ever really have to worry about that water touching the hose. The reason for that is because of that check valve. So basically, if there's no pressure to push the water through to past that check valve, the water that would come back out of here when you're done doing your flush is all gonna be clean water. So you ain't ever gotta worry about nasty water touching that hose. But a lot of people just like for sanitational purposes have separate hoses. Then down you're gonna have your outside shower and this is what your connection is here for that. It just pretty much just pushes in, you push, twist to lock it into place. When you go to take it off, make sure there is no pressure on it and then it'll easily twist off a lot easier and come off. If there's pressure on the lines, this guy can be difficult to take off. And then this is your winterized hose that goes into your jugs of antifreeze to winterize the coach. And then this is your tool to take your filter canister off. Next is going to be where this is where your 50 amp power cord will plug in. Right now we just have our shop one plugged in. Your sewer or your bumper will hold your sewer hose. Uh, it does not come with the coach. 
but it will not hold the elbow. I always like to say, get yourself a container of ice cream, the little plastic containers of ice cream. We'll have a good time or a depressing time eating the ice cream, but we want to save that plastic container when we're done. The reason for that is you can put that elbow in that container and it'll help keep it stored so it isn't sliding around anywhere. I have also seen customers where once they've got it in there, they got a nice little set spot, like maybe right here, somewhere in there, where they would actually just screw it in there and that container's stationary and they just got it right there at any time. Then we got our on-demand water heater. Uh, basically with this guy, the only thing I got to show you back here is you got your switch to turn it on and turn it off. And then you got your pressure relief valve down here. This guy usually does get winterized whenever you go to, <clears throat> when you go to winterize your coach. That valve in there's, I told you, I'm sorry, I told you incorrectly. The valve in there is so that it would, it swaps to the winterization hose. It doesn't bypass the water heater because it, it has to be winterized as well. My apologies for that misinformation. Then we got your 50, 50 uh, amp power cord that is in here. We got our ladder to the roof. It's meant to inspect the roof only. We're not trying to go up there and have NASCAR parties and watch races, things like that. Uh, but you do want to go up there and just basically you're checking the lap sealant. You're making sure that it hasn't created air bubbles as you pull it down the road and during the hot summer days or over time it starts drying out and starts cracking. When that happens, you're just going to clean that lap sealant down. You can put down new over that. It is usually recommended you only want to try to do that like two to three times. Um, multiple layers of lap sealant over time, it just kind of defeats the job that it's trying to do. Uh, and the weight limit on your ladder is 250 pounds. So this one here is also going to be that master key as well. Um, your water station compartment was going to be, I believe it was the 751. I apologize for not telling you guys that beforehand. Yeah, the 751 key. It's got a little Lex on it. All right, then as we come around the other side, I do have our stereo on inside, just with the outside speakers, so you guys can hear these guys operating. But then we do also have the outside TV here. Uh, it's already been pre-scanned and picked up St. Louis stations, and we'll talk a little more about the TV once we have stepped inside at the main TV. But basically, this guy can't come out, and it does pivot does have it does have to be secured during travel so it's got these guys here and it does lock in as well this remote here is going to be for the outside tv a lot of times customers will just leave that remote sitting in here so it's always with that tv uh basically this that remote's been synced to this tv while and also the same for the one inside but they are also two different style remotes all right, so next we've got our little outside kitchen area. This guy, once again, same as your storage rack, slides all the way out. And then this would slide out as well. And then you're gonna basically have your connection here where you quick connect here. You feed your line through here and it ties in down below. Down below here, you got your shut off valve to turn it on and off. It has to be in this position when you go to hook up your hose. And then when you open it, it helps locks the hose, this piece here in place so it won't slide off. And it also allows the gas to come through. And then we do have a secondary one that uh, per request, customer request that was installed. Got your bottle opener. Got your sink there as well. Uh, with the griddle. Basically this guy here, you just, it's got its own spark igniter. So you just turn it. Till it lights, I usually will have the griddle off and then I can see once it's lit, then I can put this guy right back on. If I did it that slowly, I would have probably maybe burnt myself a little. This guy here is gonna slide in, lift. Oh. The lock for this is on this side. Back my keys. And then of course you got your unlock there. Do you have a 110 out here as well? Uh, center push button light. You got a 110 mini fridge. Uh, this guy does, the unit has to be plugged in for this guy to have power. And then you got your temperature setting up top there. Then we got our other pass through. You do have an outside 110 connection here as well that is GFCI protected.
Then we got our furnace here. Basically with this guys, you see this caution sticker tells you that you want to make sure that you don't block this. But I do like to recommend getting mud diver screens. These guys, they're only usually around $15 or cheaper. Um, but those guys will help save if some, for if mud divers get in there or wasps get in there, they build nests. Uh, they create issues where it, the furnace doesn't properly work or it won't come on or it ain't giving you heat. Like It can give you all kinds of numerous problems. Um, shop rates can vary from anywhere you take it to go get it done. Um, as low as 140 and up. But shop rates are usually not cheap. Um, so a little $15 investment would help you greatly. Next, we got our tires. You do want to make sure these guys are torqued to a... I believe this was a hundred. I believe these guys were a hundred foot pounds. And the sticker also tells you a hundred as well. Uh, but this sticker here likes to tell you you want to check your lug nuts at 50, 100, and 200 miles. I always like to say, basically when you leave a campground, there's usually, you know, first place we're going to stop is the gas station. Uh, as we're filling up, we can check the lug nuts where you're generally knocking out two birds with one stone. But you also do want to keep your tire pressure topped off to the max PSI level, which these guys are 80 PSI. Nice thing is the Goodyear puts them in nice big letters right on the side so you can see that. So you ain't trying to use a magnifying glass to read the small print. We'll come back to our doors and steps here in just a moment. As we kind of come over here to the other side, you do have a sticker that is labeled low points. Uh, basically, this is for the lowest points of the water lines in the coach. You'll use these guys when you go to winterize the unit. Uh, basically, you open those guys up, you open up your faucets, try to get as much water out, then you'll winterize, but then you open them back up again to get that pressure off of those lines. Uh, I also like to recommend when you're done camping, you open up these lines, open up a faucet. As you go home, air is going to blow through those lines, and it's going to push any excess water out for you that's in there so it wouldn't become potentially stagnant or bad. And then over here on this side, pretty much you got your inverter here. This is basically for the refrigerator only. So you can, um, basically what it does is it will convert the 12 volt power to a 110 source so that the fridge can run as you're going down the road. Nice thing is, is when you're plugged in, as long as your charge line is good on your truck, it's gonna be charging the battery as you're going down the road. That'll keep your good uh, food good and cold. Uh, your on and off switch is generally right here. Right now it's in the off position because we are plugged in. Then you got another push button light, another bottle opener. They must really think you guys like to drink. Uh, then you got your light switch here. This is going to be for those front cap lights on the very front to turn them on and turn them off. Then this guy here is your battery disconnect. So basically, when you're storing the camper, you're going to turn this guy, pull the key, and what it is is it disconnects the camper from the battery. So if something was left on, it would not drain the batteries on you, okay? Nice thing about this though, is that you do have solar panels to help charge the batteries. But if you got your inverter on trying to keep that fridge cold off just that, these panels do struggle to try to keep up with that, with that demand that the inverter's trying to call for. Uh, but basically this, this is gonna be the controller right here. It just monitors the batteries. Once the batteries get below a certain level, it allows the current sur surge from the panels to come through to charge the battery. Once the battery sense is full, it shuts that circuit off. So that way it isn't potentially overcharging your batteries. Oh, and then we got our backup camera stuff for our customer there. This one is also labeled M for master. It's these guys back here that are going to be your black key to lock those guys. And pretty much those guys say DB on them for deadbolt. All right, so with our entry door, you do always have to make sure that this door is going to be open as far as it can go. Usually you want it all the way open, but you got your awning arm there, so it's not going to let you do that. These guys got the nice little hydraulic struts, and these guys are real nice to fold up and in. Real nice and easy, and then they just rest right there, and it's secured when the door is closed. Well, I got this open. I can show you this, guy. So your manual crank tool. They will go through here so you can bring the slide room in if something happened to the motor for some reason your switch ain't working you still have a way to bring in that slide room the other ones on the other hand are a little trickier because they are the swintex style slides as you see there are straps on the top and the bottom uh, i'd have to tell you guys that those guys are to never be lubricated because over time they can cause the 
gears again and get gummed up at the motors. There's two, basically two independent motors that talk to each other through a control panel. Uh, so when you're, you know, when they start lubricating, they start getting gummed up, they ain't working right, things along that nature. They always say when it starts looking dirty or dingy, your, your simple recommendation is you're supposed to clean it with soap and water. Uh, before we step inside, let's see where we're here. So, underneath your slide on the other side where the sewer was, I'm going to take that just so I can show you. Right over there is where you're, basically, you're going to drain your fresh water tank. Let me try to zoom in on that there so you guys can see that right there. Right now, it's open because we ain't got no water in that tank. But then you got that one tube next to it, and then you have another tube right here close to us. One is going to be your breather tube, and one is your overflow tube. Thank you, camera lady. You're very welcome. Uh, all right. As we step inside, you're going to have your fire extinguisher located right here. We're always at the door. But we're going to start right here, but then we're going to continue to work our way that direction and back around. Uh, but basically, I like to start with our control panel. Uh, so what the control panel does going to tell you your tank status is. You got the fresh tank. Your battery status, black one, black two, gray one, gray two, and I believe auxiliary is not used. Nice thing is, is I wrote it down so I can remember. And I leave this in here for the customers as well. Uh, this will always be different from camper to camper. Usually they got these all over the place. Next, you're going to have your water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need this guy. Then you got your water heater. This is going to be basically your... Secondary power switch for that guy. Turn that on. As you see, this panel just kicked on. So you got the switch outside, but then you got a secondary switch in here for power as well. Both of those switches do have to be on for this to have power. And then you got your tank heaters. With the tank heaters, basically, they got built-in thermostats, so it monitors the tanks. Uh, they just sit on the bottom of the tanks. Once they get below a certain level or a certain temperature, they automatically kick on and will automatically kick off once they've reached a set temperature. And usually it's somewhere between, uh, what was that, uh, 30, 38 degrees and uh, 55 degrees, is I think is the range on that. But please don't quote me on those numbers. Uh, then you got your lights here. This one here was for our ambiance light. This other one here was for our main area lights, kitchen and living room. And then our other one is going to be for our awning lights outside. So then you got your, to bring your awning in or out. One thing you do have to know is your door does need to at least be in a straight position when you go to open it so that the arm does not get caught. And then bring it out. I'm going to bring it right about here so I can kind of at least just try to show you what I'm wanting to show you here. Uh, be, can you, I don't know if you can see me through the window there. I can. So basically right here on this side, you would pull it down and you can create a pitch where it's basically it's meant to be as a shade protectant. Um, I have, I know not everybody uses it as a shade protectant. But you do need to be known that that is what its purpose is supposed to be for. Uh, but you are able to put a pitch on either side. Uh, it is always recommended, though, if the camper is going to be unattended, like nobody's at the campsite or anything along those lines, it is recommended that you bring it in. Only because a strong gust of wind can cause damage to both the awning and the camper if you are not careful. And pop-up storms can usually be pretty brutal. And then our next one here, uh, slide one is going to be our kitchen and two is the bedroom. And then, like I was saying with this guy, this is going to be so 
Right now it ain't doing anything. It's telling me that it's sensed that the temperature outside or the output temperature is 55 degrees because that's what it's feeling right now. Once you turn on the water, it starts going. You'll see like a, a fan blade come on, a shower head, and then a flame icon. Okay, and then it'll start heating up the water. You can change it between Celsius and Fahrenheit there, and then the highest it goes, I believe, was 122 degrees. And you can also turn it off from here if you wanted to as well. All right. Now we'll start heading back this side here. You got your two uh, stools. These guys are to be secured on the bed during travel. You got storage down below here as well. This here is going to be our own owner's manual bag so basically this has the manuals for most of the appliances in the coach all inside here for the man or basically a manual for the camper itself is going to be on this sticker right here this is going to be the information you're going to need right here come around and let our camera lady see that and i like i like the nice design that they did here a lot of this uh black and gold or black on gold very nice i actually do like that nice little setup but then you got your uh, sink here uh two different sprayer options on that guy uh you got your drawers storage underneath as well same as in here they do provide quite a bit of storage uh these guys here you just turn on with the center push button nice another thing i've seen is uh compared to the other 36 fls is they've actually made these short people friendly Yay. Uh, most of these guys are <laughs> really high up there and it like you can open the cabinet but then that's all you can do is really open and look um so i like how they've lowered these a little bit to where they're a little short more better short people friendly uh don't get me wrong you would still probably need a step stool if you had to get something from the very back of that oh, top shelf. for sure <laughs> <laughs> all right these guys here are going to be your control switches to bring the slide rooms in and out for each side uh, basically, this one here is going to bring in that side, and then this one here is going to bring in the other side. I'm not going to do that right now because I actually have one of our uh, hideaway beds set up in the living room area at this time. Uh, but we will show you guys that here in just a few. All right, as we step up here, I forgot I turned off our lights. Uh, you got your recliners here. Basically, there's a pull handle on the inside here. A little hard to see but it's right there and then these guys here will light up just by hitting in that area and they can be a little stubborn sometimes they go on and off as you see it just went right on and off uh you could, it has that on both sides and then you, as you see here we got the couch pretty much uh in the hideaway bed or the bed position uh when you're going to be messing with this guy, you're just going to basically pull your cushions here. This back piece here will come up. And then you just lift this guy, you fold your feet. And of course the process is going to be reversed when you're bringing the bed out. So, you know, basically you're going to be down in this position here. You just kind of pick it up, pull your feet, pull it forward. And then this guy here will just sit down like so. Then you just put your cushions right back on. Another nice little feature that they have went and done is upgraded your uh, windows. They are now more of a square style. Real nice little features. Push button there. Uh, this one here is a fire exit window. Uh, it's basically so if you guys had to get out, you're just going to pull your handle, pull it open, pull your slide open, and get out. I do recommend feet first, unless you're a good tumbler, then by all means have fun going head first. Uh, real nice, like I was saying with these guys, they just easily slide down and slide right back up. Really nice features here. I don't rave much about a whole lot of campers, but I am very, very excited about these shades and windows. They are actually very nice. All right. Then you got your cabinet space on each side of the TV area. You got a 110 hookup on this side, USB hookups. Uh, over here on the other side, you're gonna have two lights basically for ambiance lights above these slides. Or one's above the slides, the other one's above the TV area. 
Kind of gives you a little like, ambiance movie mood setting. For our TV, as you see, here's our remote for that guy. It is different than the one outside, but the setup is still going to be the same for trying to scan channels. You're going to hit your three little lines. Pulls up your menu. You're going to go all the way over to settings. You go down to channel. Channel source. And then you'll hit, then you'll push OK, and it'll start scanning for new channels. If you're not near the St. Louis area, you will have to rescan for channels. And then, of course, uh, if you guys are trying to choose a different input, um, the customer also does have an app, uh, having a DVD player installed. Uh, now I just got to try to remember how I did that. Oh, the home button. And then from there, you'll be able to choose like an HDMI port. Uh, I think that was the right one. Oh, wait, it... I'm sorry, I did show you the wrong one. I'm sorry, it's going to be that one right there. It'll pull that up and then whatever your DVD player or your game console or whatever you got in there will be, you know, just choose your HDMI setting. All right, so this remote here is going to be for your stereo. Uh, as you heard, we had our speakers on outside. That's going to be speaker zone two. Speaker zone one is just going to be just these speakers here. Excuse me. You can have them both on if you want, or if you want just inside, or someone's trying to watch TV inside, but you're outside doing work, you want music, you can have just the outside. And it does have different options as well. It's got a Bluetooth mode, um, like a TV mode, so if the TV was tied into this, uh, you could do the sound through that, DVD player, you can, with all that options, you can do that. And then our other remote here, this guy is going to be for our fireplace down below. Uh, so you got your red, that's going to be your power button. Then your thermostat's going to be so you can change it. So double zero is just going to be an amb ambiance look. So if you're just trying to have a little romantic evening, you can turn this guy on, put a bear rug down, and brown chicken, brown cow. Then you got low and high. You got a timer setting from 30 minutes to, I believe this guy was nine hours. Yep, nine hours. And then this guy here will change the color of the rocks. Setting four, trying to transition between all the colors. And then you got your flames, so you can change the color of your flames. Just like the orange look, just blue. This transitions between all of it. Or then you got warm where it's the blue and the orange. And it also gives you that purple kind of color for you to it. And they also have the buttons up here. It also, just in case if you lost a remote. I have seen where these guys get lost pretty darn easily. For the time being though, these guys are going to be put up in this cabinet right over here. Because once our DVD player comes in, it's also going to be installed down below. The reason for that is because down here in this area is where our TV antenna booster is located. So, I didn't point them up to you outside, but it's on your water uh, at your water station. You got a cable and satellite hookup. Uh, for satellite, that's just going to be that top port. But if you hooked up to like a campground cable, you do have to turn that TV antenna booster off for that cable signal to come through. And all you do to do that is just push that button. That light goes off, then you can scan for cable channels. And of course, in the settings, you'll have to change it from antenna to cable and things like that on the TV. Uh, this guy here, so you're able to bring the TV up or down. And then there you do have a shade here that comes down as well to try to block a lot of that sunlight. All right, then we already went over to the bed. That's how it's going to look when it's in its right position. They do give you another fire exit window over here as well. Then as we step down the stairs, you're going to have your little pantry area. Now, as you see, that's a motion sensor light, so it just popped on when I opened up the door. 
Then we got our microwave. The microwave um, is got, you know, basically, I like to say set the timer on this guy. If you guys go out, do stuff, you come back, you see the timer wasn't set, that means there is a potential power failure at the campsite. You do want to look and see if that came from the campsite itself or from the electric company. Sometimes those larger campsites, you will experience power surges. Uh, one thing I always do like to recommend getting is a surge protector. Uh, but you do have to be plugged in for your exhaust fan and light to work for the stove. They have to be, this has to be plugged in for that to work. Two different light settings, two different fan, spit, fan settings. And this is, I believe, also the convection oven as well. Do recommend reading the manual on that when you go to use that. Uh, for the stove area, basically, you got a switch here, and that's going to be for your oven light. And this is going to be for our oven. As you hear, when, as soon as you go to turn into that flame icon and you push and hold it in, it's automatically it's going to start the spark igniter. For down here, I know we're hearing it up top, but it's it's all built into one. But same concept here. You just twist, turn. And then you got a little ambiance lights on those guys as well. Nice little thing I've seen here is that they've changed is that they've kind of added this lip. But as you see, I'm leaning against this and it's already going off. So it's still... Just to let you know, people can easily turn these knobs, okay? Um, and there's a reason why I like to tell you about these knobs, because we're going to talk about something else here in just a minute. <clears throat> Up top, you got an area where you can store some wine. And then we got our fridge. Uh, with the fridge, when you're going to mess with these settings, it's always going to be locked. you got to press and hold this, usually for about three to five seconds. That'll shut off, and then if you want, you can change the temperature of the freezer. Temp of the fridge if you wanted to. Then it has different settings as well that you can also cycle through. And I usually like that setting right there. It usually keeps it nice, good, and cold for everything. But as you see, you got a lot of space in there on the side. And then a lot of really good space in here as well. All right, inside here is going to be where our secondary bathroom is located. Our light switch there on the side. You got your sink. Um, I would like to maybe make a personal recommendation that you wouldn't do number two in here. Uh, the only reason why I say that, and I'm not trying to be disgusting, but there's no exhaust fan. Just to keep it simple. All right, this guy here is going to be your fantastic fan that you would turn on. It's above the kitchen area. Basically, you just push. It's going to open on its own and automatically come on. And then from there, the other side is for your speed setting. So you can either uh, turn the fan down low or as high as it can go. And then if you go to close it, it'll automatically close and shut itself off. All right, so then next we got our thermostat here. Uh, this guy here controls basically the front air conditioner and the furnace. And this guy, basically, there's a lot of button pushing. When you first turn it on, it's going to light up this monitor. But then you got fan low, fan high. And that's just going to be the fan on the air conditioner. Then you got cool high and cool low. And these two settings here, the air conditioner will just continuously run. It does not matter what you have the thermostat set to. It just kicked on. Then after that, you got cool low auto and cool high auto. And that's where it will shut on and off to your desired set temperature. And then you have heat, which as you see, I like to make sure that it burns off. So it's maxed out. I'm going to go ahead and turn that down for you guys. I'm going to turn that down to about, let's go 72 degrees. And then your latch option is off. And then this switch here is just going to control your ceiling fan. And as you see, I don't have the light on on it right now. All right. 
The next, as we step up here towards the bedroom area, you're gonna have a light switch here for the bedroom. Your lock for the door, it's basically your travel lock, so it has to be locked in during travel. You are going to have a decent amount of storage right here. So you guys can see that, and it does have a center push button light there to turn it on so you can see up there as well. Each side does have a 110 and USB hookup. You've got your own little island there. Yeah, that one likes to stay a little hidden on you. Uh, your furnace duct in is on the floor. Pretty much your vents on the ceiling are going to be for the air conditioner. Uh, nice thing about this bed, as you see, it's partially tilted. That is because it actually has the ad adjustable bed lift underneath here. And that's going to be on this little control panel right here. Bring it up. Bring it down. I think I got a slider of bed over. It's getting caught on our, on our roof. I got there. And then, like I was saying, your bench gets strapped. There's one of these on each side. So they get slid on here and they get strapped together. Thank you, Miss Camera Lady. You're very welcome. And there is also storage baskets underneath the bed as well. I try to keep that bed on that, that rail. Ah. Helps keep it uh, where it's, yeah, like it's supposed to be. Uh, this thermostat here is going to control just this air conditioner here in the back. But same concept, just a lot of button pushing. This guy here is going to be your bathroom fan. And it's got a knob on there that you would turn to open and close it. You're very welcome. And then our light switch for the bathroom. All right, inside here is where you can install a washer and dryer combo. This does get removed when you go to do that. This cannot be there. And it does have the, uh, the plugs in there, but uh, they did not install the right plugs if you want my personal opinion. Uh, they put GFCI resettable outlets in there. Uh, the problem with that is if those get tripped, you almost have to basically remove your washer and dryer to reset them. Poor design. Just got to throw that one out. But if your washer and dryer gets installed, those basically get upgraded to just a standard outlet. Uh, inside here, you can have the option for a King Wi-Fi system, and it's got the plug for it to plug into. Then you got your drawers down here as well. And then you got your very nice fancy shower. Uh, so this guy does all kinds of things. Uh, your one on the water or the bottom is going to be what, you know, is your on and off and your hot and cold. And then up here, you got your setting and it's got it kind of labeled right on this guy here. So the top here is going to be just your sprayer. This one here is the shower head and the two side jets here that basically shoot straight out at you. Really cool. And then you got your other one here for your guy there. Side. That side there is just the straight jets coming out at you. That's very cool. Very nifty. This is your travel lock. You unlock it whenever you, you know, when you're going to go use it. Just like so. There are slots in the bottom of these, as you see. That is so that the water can drain out. And then we got our sink here, uh, GFCI reset. So if some of the outlets ain't working, check to see if this guy hasn't been tripped. You got your double vanity without a double sink. Uh, so <laughs> you, you got your you got your double mirrors. So both people can look good. So both people can look good. One can one can be doing their hair if they're super tall while they're doing and their business. And one can do their beard. And one can do their beard. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> and then get yelled at by your fiance for beard hair all over the place, but she don't want you to shave. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> All right. And then as we go back our direction here in the bedroom, back to our bedroom area, you got your closet area here, your drawers. Down below here is where your fuse control panel box is located. Get located. So basically everything that runs off the sure power, so you have to be plugged in for it to work, is going to be on the breakers. And then everything that runs off the battery is on the fuses. And they do have everything on here labeled for you what they are. And then area where you can put your TV. Um, as you see, this is not a very big space, so you're not going to put a bigger TV here. Um, but they do give you this nice little counter here, so if you wanted to put a little larger TV, you can. You just got to make sure that you properly secure it before travel. Then we do have another fire exit window if you're unable to make your way to the entry door. And then from there, we have made our way around your coach. Hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we do our best to answer those for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.